Hi everyone, this is Arish. I welcome you all to this session, Industrial Applications of Quantum Computing. Application potential of quantum computing is being explored with respect to multiple industrial use cases like chop shop, scheduling, traffic, optimization, etc. I would like to start this session by giving an overview of different use cases where quantum computers can help industries. And let's begin with healthcare industry. Quantum computers could impact healthcare industries in a number of ways. For example, Google recently simulated a chemical reaction using a quantum computer. So, the present simulation involved a simple interaction which can be modeled using present classical computing power. Still, this is considered as a milestone for the quantum technology. Future computers, especially quantum computers, are expected to simulate complex molecular interactions much more accurately than classical computers. You know, this could help speed up the drug discovery efforts taken in healthcare industry by easily predicting the effects of drug candidates. Another area where drug discovery can be improved using quantum computing is protein folding. Yeah, there are many startups investing their money and time in protein folding. I would like to mention a name, Protein Cure, a leading startup in computational protein drug discovery. This startup combines quantum computing, machine learning, and molecular dynamics to help refine and optimize protein therapeutics. This is a notoriously difficult task for conventional computers. But using quantum computers to address this issue could ultimately make designing powerful protein-based medicines easier. Eventually, quantum computing could also lead to better approaches to personalized medicine. Okay, next, we will look at genome analysis. If faster genome analysis is possible, then tracking diseases and tailored treatment plans specific to every patient can be achieved. Genome sequencing creates lots and lots of data, which means that analyzing a person's DNA requires a lot of computing power. Industrial researchers believe that an appropriate quantum algorithm could work through this data much more quickly, making genome sequencing more efficient and easier to scale. A number of pharma giants have shown interest in quantum computing in genome sequencing. For example, Biogen partnered with quantum computing software startup OneQubit and Accenture to build a platform for comparing molecules to help speed up the early stages of drug discovery. Let's next look at the use cases of finance industry. Applying emerging quantum technology to financial problems particularly those dealing with uncertainty and constrained optimization, should prove hugely advantageous. One of the reasons for this advantage is the solution space of a quantum computer. Since you are in the middle of this course, I hope you must be knowing the power of the solution space of a quantum computer. It is orders of magnitude larger than traditional computers. See, if you want to double the power of a classical computer, it, it requires about double the number of transistors working on a problem. Whereas, the power of a quantum computer can be approximately doubled each time only one qubit is added. While broad commercial applications may remain several years away, IBM expects quantum computing to produce breakthrough products and services likely to successfully solve very specific business problems within three to five years. And IBM is working, putting a lot of efforts on this research. We will explore potential use cases providing examples that apply to three main industries in financial services, 
namely banking, financial markets, and insurance. Nowadays, financial services customers demand personalized products and services that rapidly anticipate their evolving needs and behaviors. 25% of small and medium-sized financial institutions lose customers due to offerings that don't prioritize customer experience, which is very bad. It is very difficult to create analytical models that place through huge behavioral data quickly and accurately enough to target which products are needed by specific customers in near real time. So this constrains financial institutions from providing preemptive product recommendations in an agile manner, missing opportunities to expand current customer share. I work in a data science firm where we analyze customers' emotions and we give the reports to the product-based companies where they tailor make the products based on customers' interest. So it is not an easy task. It takes a lot of computing power and a lot of time. A similar problem exists in fraud detection also. It is estimated that financial institutions are losing between 10 billion US dollars and 40 billion in revenue a year due to fraud and poor data management practices. Fraud detection systems remain highly inaccurate, returning 80% false positive. False positive means marking some authentic transaction as a fraud transaction. False positive. The system will return the transaction as positive, means fraud, but which is false. That's called false positive. This causes financial institutions to be overly risk averse. You know, even I faced the problem last month. My bank blocked my credit card when I paid my rent through Paytm. You know, there is an option in Paytm to pay a rent. I regularly pay my rent using Paytm. Last month, my bank blocked my card. Then I received a call from the customer support asking whether I made this transaction or not. It te took them around six hours to unblock my card. It, it, it is very much evident that the real-time fraud detection systems need a lot of upgradation. For customer targeting and prediction modeling, quantum computing could be a game changer. The data modeling capabilities of quantum computers are expected to prove superior in finding patterns, performing classifications, and making predictions. And we will soon see what is a classification and what is a prediction. Okay. Uh, complexity in financial markets trading activities is skyrocketing. In this complicated trading landscape, investment managers struggle to incorporate real-life constraints such as market volatility and customer life event changes into portfolio optimization. Those who are uh, involving yourself in stocks, mutual funds might know about this very clearly. Ideally, money managers would like to simulate large number of potential scenarios and investment options to validate sensitivities when estimating expected returns. Quantum technology could help cut through the complexity of today's trading environments. And quantum computing's Combinatorial optimization capabilities may enable investment managers to improve portfolio diversification, rebalance portfolio investments, to more precisely respond to market conditions and investor goals, and more cost-effectively streamlining trading settlement processes. These three financial service activities will be potentially benefiting from quantum computing in the near future. Other Major industries that will benefit from quantum computers include supply chain logistics, industrial design, agriculture, etc. Quantum computers are very good at optimization. Given the extreme complexities and variables involved in international shipping routes and managing supply chains, quantum computing could be well placed to help tackle taunting logistic challenges. Recently, DHL 
started eyeing quantum computers to help it more efficiently pack parcels and optimize global delivery routes. The company is hoping to increase the speed of its service while also making it easier to adapt to changes, like such as cancellation of orders and rescheduling of deliveries. Others want to improve traffic flows using quantum computers, a capability that could help delivery vehicles more make more stops in less time. For example, Volkswagen in partnership with T-Wave Systems. T-Wave Systems is one of the big quantum manufacturer. And Volkswagen in partnership with T-Wave Systems ran a pilot recently to optimize bus routes in Portugal, Lisbon city in Portugal. The company said that each of the participating buses was assigned an individual route that was updated in real time based on changing traffic conditions. Volkswagen states that it intends to commercialize the tech in the future. Quantum computing is also drawing interest from big players thinking about manufacturing and inter industrial design. For example, Airbus, a global aerospace corporation, established a quantum computing unit in 2015 and has also invested in quantum software startup QZWare and quantum computer maker IonQ. The company is looking at quantum annealing for digital modeling and material sciences. For instance, a decent quantum computer could quickly filter through countless variables to help determine the most efficient wing design of a aeroplane, which when using a normal classical computer takes months to execute and give us the results. So other companies including Telmer and Samsung are already using quantum computers to help research new materials for building better batteries. Quantum computers could also boost agriculture by helping to produce fertilizers more efficiently. Nearly all of the fertilizers used in agriculture around the world rely on ammonia. Ammonia is a core in ingredient. The ability to produce ammonia or a substitute more efficiently would mean cheaper and less energy intensive fertilizers. In turn, easier access to better fertilizers could help feed the plant's growing population. Little recent progress has been made on improving the process to create or replace ammonia because the number of possible catalyst combination that could help us to do so is extremely large. Using today's supercomputer to identify the best catalyst combination to make ammonia would make take centuries to solve. However, a powerful quantum computer could be used to much more efficiently analyze different catalyst combinations. This is another application of simulating chemical reactions. And we are on the way to achieve them. This will help us to find a better way to create ammonia. Moreover, we know that bacteria in the roots of plant make ammonia every day with a very low energy cost using a molecule called nitrogenase. This molecule is beyond the abilities of our best supercomputers to simulate and hence better understand but it could be within the reach of a future quantum computer. See there are many techniques available for quantum computers to solve these industrial problems. One of them is to combine the power of GPU with QPU. GPU is graphic processing units. QPU means quantum processing units. And other techniques include training quantum computers like neural networks to do machine learning tasks, tasks like classifications, regressions, clustering, so on. There is a pro programming paradigm called differential programming. This is emerging where the algorithms are not 
hand coded but they are learned the umbrella term for all of these techniques is called quantum machine learning qml machine learning is another emergent technology already making waves in the mainstream it involves teaching machines vast amount of knowledge to perform various tasks quantum computing can be of significant help in ml efforts the machine learning development requires the process of very huge amounts of data this helps the machine learning models recognize patterns and make decisions better when the data is very low the learning process will be very weak so although classical computing is doing its job machine learning would benefit a lot from quantum technology also faster processing can lead to better model performance you know i am right now working on voice data so i have to process my voice to get some insights from it when i use a cpu and process the voice data efficient results can be obtained for processing a 30 minute audio the the inference time is nearly 20 to 30 minutes when i use a gpu i get better results when i process a 30 minute audio with gpu i get my results in 20 30 seconds and a faster processing is capable in quantum computer so when quantum computers comes into picture to solve this problem we can even solve this problem in less than a second so eventually this can result in more human like responses from model strain quantum machine learning is the tool that combines two really hot areas of research quantum computing and machine learning this tool is popularly used to solve most of the use cases we have seen generally machine learning algorithms are run on classical data like image classification or natural language processing but quantum machine learning deals with the integration of quantum devices in machine learning algorithms therefore the algorithms can be quantum and the data can either be classical or quantum since some of you may not be exposed to classical machine learning i would like to give an overview of it now machine learning is the field of study that gives computers the capability to learn without being explicitly programmed computer learns pattern in the data and uses it to make predictions a very good analogy of it will be our parents training us to find good fruits or good vegetables from the market when we are kids after we are grown up our parents don't accompany us we ourselves go and take the best pick the best from the basket so this is called learning from the data machine learning is broadly divided into two categories supervised and unsupervised so under supervised we have classification task regression task and clustering task comes under unsupervised learning let's look at some examples of these terms to better understanding so let's start with classification as i mentioned earlier classification comes under supervised learning this picture shows an example of spam detection in mail so if you remember in your gmail you have a separate box for spam your mails that comes to inbox automatically gets labeled as a spam and they will be sent to your spam folder earlier when email was discovered like when it was in the early use somewhere in the early 2000s or late 90s we don't have an automatic spam detection system i am a early user of uh, yahoo mail where i read a mail and then i used to mark it as a 
spam mail. So based on our input, the user's input from the history, the new system learnt which are all the mails. So what is the text that can be labeled as spam or not spam? Based on the user's address, based on the content of the mail, based on the attachments, a mail is automatically classified as spam or not spam. Let's, let's look at an example for regression. A house price prediction and life of a car prediction and price of a stock's prediction. These are all examples of regression task. See, regression means it predicts continuous values. In classification, we predicted the label, but in regression, we don't have label, we have continuous values. Like we consider the size of a house in square feet, the location of the house, furnished or unfurnished, and based on the facilities like water, inverter facilities. Like considering all these variables, price of a house can be predicted. For this prediction, we need history of house prices and their facilities. So this task is called regression. In classification, we predict the labels. In regression, we predict the continuous values like prices. Now, the third famous task is clustering. In clustering, we have data, but the computer does not learn from history, historical data. It learns from the present data. One good example is, we have news all over the internet. The Google News Portal groups similar news like this. If you open Google News, this news.google.com and see, you will have the news. See, if you see the first topic, Times of India, NDTV, Hindustan Times, the print NDTV. So the, these are all the topics speaking about same defense content. The same way, the NDTV and money control, both the web pages talking about wearing masks are grouped under one category. This is the clustering task. Today we are going to focus on classification task. And I would like to give an intro to classification done on classical computer. For a classification task, computer considers data of objects that are assigned to n classes. n is a finite number. We have many classifiers in classical computers like Naivase, LDA, Support Vector Mission, Nearest Neighbor, Learning Vector Quantization, Decision Trees. One of the popular classification tool is Support Vector Mission. We are going to see how quantum computers are going to enhance Support Vector Mission from classical computers. To understand the quantum's mechanism, we will first understand how a support vector machine in classical computer works. Each data point is viewed as a p-dimensional vector. Data point, let, let me take the example of a, a cancer detection system. So, in cancer detection system, the input will be the size in diameter, Let, let's say there is a tumor detected in a person and the system should say whether it is a malignant tumor, a cancerous tumor or a benign tumor. For this task, the system needs some input like the diameter of the tumor, texture of the tumor, location of the tumor, something like age of the tumor and the smoking habit, alcoholic habit of the person, of the patient. So based on all these values, let's say I have P values, like P details. Then each patient's data point is viewed as a P-dimensional vector. And based on the historical data, okay, based on the previous deductions, I know based on 
the person's health condition the person's diameter of the tumor texture of the tumor uh, drinking habits smoking habits based on that a doctor classified the tumor as benign or malignant with that historical data now the svm gets trained from the data and it is going to predict a new tumor a new patient's tumor so how it does is it attempts to separate those data points with a p minus 1 dimensional hyperplane we have many hyperplanes that does this job choosing the best hyperplane where the maximum margin hyperplane okay what is the best hyperplane the distance from the hyperplane to the nearest data point on each side is maximized so this concept will be better understood when i show it pictorially let's look at a two dimensional hyperplane let's assume that this x axis is the age of a person and y axis is the income of the person based on the age and income we can classify whether the person is married or bachelor if the age is less and income is less more possibility of the person is to be it's it's more possibility he is a bachelor and if the age is more and the income is more the possibilities are high to be a married man so the best hyperplane that divides these two classes is in the middle because the distance between the hyperplane and the support vectors support vectors are the margin points the distance between the support vectors and the hyperplanes must be maximized i'll take you to couple of examples where you can easily find the best hyperplane if you see these data points a b and c or some of the three of the hyperplanes we have infinite number of hyperplanes out of these three if you see b b divides the two classes with maximum margin so b is the right hyperplane for this svm task look at this picture we have a b and c all three are dividing the classes very properly but out of these three the maximum margin difference can be found in the hyperplane c so c will be picked by the svm what if we don't have an easily separable data points in that case we take the help of something called kernel look at this we can't separate it easily with the hyperplane so what we do is we need a kernel function which takes this data the two dimensional data to a higher dimension let's say we are adding a z axis which is nothing but x squared plus y squared then this higher dimension makes the data points linearly separable this is the use of kernel and such kernel will be used in quantum svm also now the function that takes lower dimensional input space and transform it to higher dimensional space is the kernel it makes non separable to separable data points these are some of the kernels available in classical computers linear poly and rbf let's look at a simple example called iris classification using svm this iris is a flower in iris classification task we are going to have a data set where we will have three different classes of iris flowers namely virginica versicolor and setosa all three look similar but they differ in their sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width there was a botanist who picked 50 flowers for each of the three species and he measured the features of setosa virginica and versicolor all the four features and he labeled them this is the historical data we are going to deal with we are going to have 50 for each class which means 150 data points 150 sepal petal length and width and their class 
So our SVM is going to learn from the 150 data points and it's going to predict a new data point. The data set can be found in this URL for your reference. Now let's open Google Colab. So you, this is a Python code we are going to run now. You can run Python code either in PyCharm ID or Jupyter Notebook or Spider. We have multiple ways to do that. I always prefer Google Colab because you don't have to install anything. The only necessary is your browser. Open your browser and type colab.research.google.com. You will see a screen like this. Click on new notebook and we'll start coding from there. When you open a new notebook, you will see a title here, untitled with some number. This is the name of this notebook and you can access this whenever you want with this file and open notebook option. Now, this is called a code cell where you write your code. I think most of you must have been used this collab earlier. It's very easy to execute code here. Let me execute a sample print statement. I can This is a Python code to print high Q Krishi students. I have multiple ways to run this cell. Either I can click this to run, clearing the output, or I can do a shift enter to execute or I do have an option to execute here run selection these are all multiple ways to execute the code that we have written let's start our SVM example for classical computer by importing a package called sklearn this is a Python package which has the module SVM, Support Vector Mission. When you type, you get some hints here. This is called IntelliSense, which is inbuilt. So to test our SVM, we are going to download an inbuilt data set from sklearn. sklearn package has data sets sub package where you have a function called load iris this function loads iris data to us so i have imported and executed the cell this execution imported these capacity capabilities to me now i am going to define a variable iris and the variable is going to store the value of iris data set and that is going to happen with the help of the load iris function this load iris function is going to do the magic for me now i have executed this cell to know what has happened i will print iris now I don't have to give print statement if it is a single statement. So I'm printing the variable. I'm able to see four values in a row. 6.7, 2.5, 5.8, 1.8. These four values. These are all the data. Then I have feature names. Sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. File name, frame, target. Targets are classes. Zero means iris setosa. 1 means iris versicolor and 2 means iris virginica. So the first data that is 5.1, 3.5, 1.4, 0.2 .5, belongs to 0th class that is iris setosa. And the first 50 rows belongs to iris setosa next 50 belongs to iris versicolor and the next 50 belongs to iris virginica if you want to 
know them separately we have a code which just gives me the keys of the iris and i type iris dot keys i'll be able to see what are all the keys available and i can call those keys separately if i call iris dot data data key it gives only the feature values the four values for 150 data can you see nothing else is printed here if i call iris dot target i'll be able to see only zeros and ones the target labels if i type iris dot target names i'll get only the names versetosa versicolor and virginica this is how we are able to look at the data now let's visualize the data for visualization we have a package called matplotlib so i'm going to import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt i'm giving the name plt for the pyplot class so now i'm going to use a scatter plot to have a look at the data so a scatter plot is a two dimensional plot where we plot our data points as dots so in the x i am going to plot the data values of all the row zeroth column this colon indicates that i want all rows and zero indicates i want zero column values and in the y i am going to plot the data of all rows first column and i'm going to give color different colors based on the target values now i'm going to plot this cat plot can you see these are all the three targets 4.5 5.0 is the first column value the y axis is the second column value i can make this as third column also so if you take two columns we can see that the three different colors are of three different classes this is how we can visualize the data now let's get into the business we are going to initialize a class svc with the kernel we have seen multiple kernels that let's use linear kernel there are some fine tuning values like c and gamma which is not necessary at this point now after defining this class i am going to train my model iris svc for training the model we have a function fit where i am going to take the data historical data and the respective classes and i'll be training my model here after getting trained i can easily predict now let me show you how good the prediction is i'm taking the zeroth data and zeroth target the target class is zero let's predict the zeroth data now iris dot predict use the prediction class for us so let me copy this data exactly and i am going to send this as input for sending input okay and i am going to print this prediction class if you print the okay there is an error what is the error here 
or it is iris svc dot predict i get zero exactly let me take the 50 first 50 or 60th data where the class is not zero the class is one let me see the class is one let me give that as input to this predict function let's ask our classifier to predict the class and it classifies as one since the number of features is only four classification can be easily performed using linear kernel if the number of features is large and the data points are randomly distributed then a complex kernel is needed to compute an optimal hyperplane in some higher dimension that can separate the classes unfortunately complex kernels are difficult to compute classically this is where quantum computer comes in if the kernel cannot be estimated classically quantum machine learning shows a lot of promise in being able to use the multidimensional computation space of the quantum computer in order to find the hyperplane when data is mapped from its input dimension into the hilbert space of the computer it intrinsically is cast into a higher dimensional space and as we showed finding a dividing hyperplane is often only possible in a higher dimension so now let's program a quantum SVM with Qiskit. I love working with Colab, but sometimes due to technical issues, you may not be able to use Qiskit program code in Colab. So those who are unable to run the code, which I'm, I'll show now, can use the Jupyter lab of IBM Quantum Lab where you can click on the kernel, Qiskit kernel, and you can start doing the code. Okay. If I have to use Qiskit in Google Colab, I have a constraint of installing it. So first I will do pip install Qiskit. X mark is used to clear the output. The next package to be installed is Qiskit Machine Learning. I have to execute this code cell for this package to get installed. It takes some time for the installation. Once the installation is done, we can start importing our packages. Yes, successfully installed Qiskit machine learning. Now I'm clearing the output. I'm going to import necessary packages. First, I'm importing Qiskit. Then I'll import matplotlib.pyplot for plotting the output then I'll import numpy which is a numerical package which helps us to manipulate arrays then I'm going to import ad hoc data set which is a part of Qiskit machine learning dot data sets ad hoc data set is a generated data set next I'm going to import the basic AR backend for Qiskit next I'm importing the quantum instance We will be running the SVM using the quantum instance. Next, we will be importing 
from Kiskits Kiskit.circuit dot library we will be importing the CZ feature map next is the most important module from quantum machine learning package from, sorry from Qiskit machine learning package we are importing the quantum SVM classifier QSVC finally I would like to import from quantum machine learning the quantum kernel which helps us to do the classification so I'm executing this after the importing is done I'm going to initialize some variables the first variable I'm initializing is feature dimension then I'll be initializing the train data set size as 20 and test data set size as 10 and uh, random seed value can be any number I'm taking something like 10,506 and the number of shots that's going to be executed is again roughly taking it as 10,000 let me initialize my values now I'm going to load my train features train labels test features test labels and sample using the function ad hoc data what happens here is the ad hoc data function divides the total data sets let's say I have let's assume that if I have a hundred data it it divides them into two groups one as training and testing and in the training set it divides that into training features and training labels so totally we will have four important groups of values training features and their corresponding labels like we saw an iris data set in iris data set the training features are those four values the sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width training label was the class of the flower the same way test features four features and the label in the case of iris data set now we are using ad hoc data set so the function ad hoc does the job of differentiating and grouping them so we have to pass some parameters to this function number one is training size which we have already initialized in the previous cell after training size I want to pass the parameter test size which also we have initialized in the previous cell then there is something called one hot which is uh, 
machine learning term. One hot is a kind of encoding which we need not worry about at this point of time. And then the feature dimensions and the gap. We'll set this gap as 0.3. Whether we want to plot the data or not. Finally, a flag to include sample total or not. When I execute this, I will be able to visualize my data. It takes some time to process. Yeah, we can see the data here. Ad hoc data. Two colors means there are two classes. The blue color is class one and orange color is class two. So we have two colors with two dimensions because I have given the feature dimensions as two. If the feature dimension is not two and if it is three or four, visualizing is not possible. Now, let's move to the important part of SVM, the feature map. So, I'm creating a variable ad hoc feature map set set feature map function is used to do that we have to specify the feature dimension which is taken from the variable feature dim and the reps number of repetitions is by default 2 Now we are going to connect this with the backend. Ad hoc backend is the name. And quantum instance function is going to help us in this task. Using basic AER dot get backend. Since I'm not using the direct quantum computer so using the quantum simulator here shots is the number of shots which is 10,000 we have declared previously seed simulator is some random value which quantum computer uses Seed transpiler is again a random value. Now let's create a variable at our kernel using the quantum kernel function. We are going to use the feature map ad hoc feature map and the quantum instance equal to ad hoc backend which we defined above. Now let me execute this cell so that the variables keep themselves initialized. There is a problem. There is a typo. It's feature map, not feed through map. Executing it again. Done. No errors here. Now, the hero of the movie, the quantum support vector classifier comes into picture. To use the QSVC and I am specifying the quantum kernel as the ad hoc kernel defined above. Like 
we did in the classical SVM, we did fitting. This fit function trains the data with the label. So the same training is going to happen here. We're going to QSVC dot fit. In the iris data set, we had iris dot data and iris dot target. In this example, we are using ad hoc data where we have divided that into train features and train labels. So we are going to use those train features and train labels. Now this does the training task. I'm going to execute this and the training is happening. It takes some time. The quantum SVM is getting trained. Once the training is done, we are going to test it. In Iris dataset example, we didn't test our classifier. Since it was a classical classifier, I was not interested in testing it. But now in quantum, we are going to test it. What is testing? If you see here, I have divided my total data points into 20 training data and 10 test data. So I'm going to make sure after training on this 20, whether I'm able to classify this 10 properly or not. So this is called evaluating your classifier. We have a function called SVC QSVC dot score. I'm creating a variable QSVC score where I'm going to use the score function from the QSVC module. I have to compare the test features. What it does is this score function takes the test features, predicts the values and compares the values with the test labels because we know the ground truth value in the test labels. Again, I made the typo. Now we can print the score. Testing is happening here. It's getting executed. I hope I get some decent testing score. Fingers crossed. Great, the testing score is one, which is which means it has classified all the test features properly equal to the test labels. Now, just to give the taste of how to see the prediction, I will add one more section here, one more cell here. Predicted label is equal to QSVC dot predict. I'm going to predict from either from train features or test features. Let me take the zeroth value. Okay, ground truth label is train labels of zero. Okay. I'm going to print ground truth and the predicted label.
let's see if both are same for zeroth data point both are zero great let me test with some different number 21 21 since the accuracy score is good we will get the same labels now I would recommend you to try this QSVM on a different data set like iris data set or something which you know very well with this example I would like to end this session thank you for your patience